So we talked about the characteristics of life. Now we're going to talk about what are the structures and processes that support these functions. So what I mean by that is the organs and organ systems. And I'll just overview the organ systems right now. Um, they themselves have each have a function and then they communicate with each other in an integrated fashion to carry out the processes of life. We will do several of the organ systems in detail this semester and other ones in second semester. So the ones for this semester are the integumentary, skeletal, muscular, and nervous, and a little bit of endocrine, just because you can't not talk about these those control systems, it's the nervous and endocrine system. So we're going to cover them, um, some of them more in detail this semester, but I want you to have an overview of the, the basic function of each. Um, so let's start with integumentary. This largely refers to the skin. Um, it also is the hair and nails and some other accessory structures. Um, but its main job is to protect. So it's protecting physically um, as well as like temperature, um, several ways it protects. And you, we will see other functions besides these main ones, but it's gonna be kind of primary ones. Skeletal, this is support, physical support, protection, Best example of that are um, the skull and the kind of thoracic muscles, um, of the sorry, bones, ribs, sternum that protect your lungs and heart. And then movement. So they're going to ask act as levers for the muscular system to work, um, to have something to, to pull. Muscular, this is movement. Skeletal muscle is probably what you think of the most, but it's also cardiac and smooth muscle that also both move. Nervous and endocrine, I'm going to put together. They're both control systems, so they control and regulate basically all our body's processes. So they're going to integrate quite a bit. Cardiovascular, this is going to be responsible for transporting blood and all of the components in blood, then a lot of important components um, throughout the body. Whereas lymphatic, it's also a transport. It's going to be involved in transporting lymph fluid, lymphatic. Um, so that's gonna be involved in the immune system, fighting infection. Respiratory, transport. It's actually, instead of transport, it is transport. It's gas exchange in and out of the body. It's a type of transport, but instead of throughout the body, it's in and out of the body. Gas exchange, oxygen and carbon dioxide in and out of the body. Digestive is going to be obtaining nutrients. So taking in and absorbing food and then breaking it down. Um, then excreting that waste. So everything related to obtaining nutrients, all those things, absorption, um, breaking down, and then excretion. Urinary has quite a few roles. Um, big one is to remove waste. So excretion. Along with that though, kind of related to that is pH regulation. So acid base and water regulation. So water is not really a waste, but the urinary system can um, retain or excrete more water in order to regulate how much is in and outside the body. That's gonna help regulate blood pressure. And then reproductive to produce gametes. And then fertilize and grow them, right, um, under most conditions. And, it's, and then offspring, we'll say, that kind of encompasses the growth and development of those gametes um, once they've been fertilized. So that's, you know, female specific, actually. So then these organ systems all communicate with each other. We saw, I already mentioned the nervous and endocrine system doing that, as well as the urinary system regulating blood pressure which also affects the cardiovascular system. Um, but one other example, I want to have it show up here. This is kind of a nice little diagram that shows these things working together. Um, 
So for example, food coming in um, from the digestive system has to use the cardiovascular system to get anywhere in the body. Um, the cardiovascular system is responsible for getting it to the other organs. Um, respiratory system is necessary for anything to be done because you need oxygen for metabolic processes. So without that oxygen, the nutrients wouldn't have really any value. Um, we need the urinary system as well as digestive to get rid of the wastes um, following that, obtaining those nutrients, um, and then nervous and endocrine to, to, to regulate all this. Um, so just kind of one kind of simple diagram showing the some of the relationship there. Um, another big one I already mentioned was blood pressure, right, which is regulated by the urinary system, um, regulating water, how much you pee. Um, but how much we, our digestive system absorbs water also makes a difference. Your heart, how hard it's pumping, um, all regulate blood pressure. And then blood pressure is hugely regulated by the nervous and endocrine systems as well. Um, those are things that are homeostatically maintained. So blood pressure, various nutrient levels, oxygen levels, all organ systems help to maintain homeostatic levels of those variables. So maintaining blood pressure within a certain range to allow our bodies to function um, is ultimately relies on the function of all organ systems. And if one is dysfunctional, sometimes another one can make up for it, um, but it's gonna, it's, something else is gonna have to respond. Okay, um, I'd like you to do this learning check. So for each organ, um, write down a more thorough description than, than what is here. So um, what do I mean by gas exchange here? And then what organ system or systems, in some cases, there's more than one um, that are involved in this process.